Welcome back to the Caddy Daddy Garage. And today we're going to be looking at some of the components for the air ride for the uh, self leveling suspension on our 59. Uh, some previous videos, uh, Bob and I showed you how to install the, um, the new uh, air diaphragms in the housings. And I made some temporary valves. They had straighter valves so we could air the system up you know, and raise the car. They went in place of, of this valve. Uh, what we're going to talk about here is I'm going to give an overview of how it works because we can't really delve into making repairs, correcting design faults, and there are several design faults. Uh, that's why a lot of these systems were removed in the early 60s. They failed and Cadillac couldn't even keep up with them. So I'm going to give an overview of how it works and then we're going to get into, I'm going to show you how to rebuild one of the, uh, level, how to rebuild the leveling valve. We're going to talk about the modifications we're making to our car to make it more reliable. So the first thing that we have, we got to get compressed air. So the engine mounted air compressor. One side of this is mounted to the support, to the bracket on the engine. The other side has the um, power steering pump. What happens is this connecting the, the um, crankshaft and connecting rod just wear out terribly. You can see how much play there is. It's just, and I, I, I will remove the, the connecting rod here and you can see how just torn up. I've taken apart probably six of these compressors. I don't know if this is the worst one but I mean they're bad. You can see the the unworn out piece in the center and what do we got di 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 difference here? This is 850 in the worn spot and 875 so 25 thousandths of metal is eaten away then metal is eaten out of here so the comp and the reason the compressor fails is there's nothing to unload the compressor when the storage reservoir tank is full goes up to about over 200 pounds when that tank is full there's nothing that shuts the compressor down so it just keeps sitting here trying to pump deadheading against itself and just putting tremendous strain on the on the crankshaft and just just tearing the tearing the internals up so this all going to be Put back in. I'm going to machine a shaft that's just straight through, and it's going to be mounted on the engine. It's all going to look like it works, but it's going to do nothing. We're going to have a small electrically powered air compressor mounted in the trunk that will have a uh, pressure a switch. It'll pump up its tank, maintain its tank at around 150 pounds. I'm looking at instead of having the, the high pressure tank on the on the firewall and th this was just a weakness and these things are were worn out on cars when they were only a few years old so the next part of the system is a reservoir which has a blow off on it if the got up to I believe it's around 400 pounds it would blow off the air um, from the reservoir it travels to this valve here this valve is a pressure regulator and also provides the airlift function, that lever you pull under the dash that makes the car raise to its full height. These valves sit underneath the car, exposed to the elements, and there's no, no parts available at all for these. And I've not come across one that is good. So there's two parts of it. This part here is the pressure regulator, and then this part over here is the airlift. Pressure regulator we're going to be replacing with just a small pressure regulator, just like you might see on your air compressor, but one that's designed for an industrial application. And then this valve here is going to be replaced with a, with a three-way valve. So, and I'll explain how the airlift works when we get to that. That's on the exhaust side of the system. And so the lever under the dash will still work, but with different components, but everything in the same basic manner is factory. 
So you have your regulated air that's coming out of here, about 120 pounds or so, and it comes to a leveling uh, valve. Now this is mounted to the frame, this is mounted to the suspension to go up and down. This one here is a part so you can see that as this moves, there's a fork in there that moves that's actuating two valves. When, the, when this is pushed in this direction, that means the car is sitting too low. It opens airflow from here into the housing and out this way to the airbag. When the um, car is sitting too high, it opens this way, opens the exhaust valve, and air passes from the airbag through here and out to the airlift valve, to, which we'll get to. Um, this is a part that we have the rebuilding kit for. I have all the parts laid out, and I'm going to be showing you how to rebuild and how to make the adjustments inside. Uh, the kit we have a slightly different uh, mode of function than factory, but it does the same, same job. And then on each uh, airbag is this little um, restrictor, and this prevents if you if one of these if the nylon line ruptures, it keeps the car from just going bam onto the ground. It drops it slowly. And then finally, the other part of this is the airlift. And the way that works is normal operation. This is the exhaust side. It passes straight through. And all these lines from the various three valves on the car, the two rear and the one front, they all come to here. Normal operation is it exhausts the excess air out to the into the air cleaner to muffle the noise. But if you take the regulated air and you push air in reverse through the exhaust system, it will force its way past this Schrader valve inside and as it forces its way past, it's going to inflate the airbag which is going to open the Schrader valve more because it's trying to lower the car but we're forcing air the wrong way and it'll raise the car to the full height. So that's a brief overview of how all these parts interact. We have just a, several little systems that all work together. So we, we attack each one, rebuild each part, the parts that need rebuilding, redesign, come up with a new solution for these compressors that fail that are very expensive if you can find an NOS one. I mean, we could go to the trouble of having this built up and having uh, uh, inserts made for the connecting rods, but it's a lot of money for something that will just most likely fail again. So the next uh, video in this little series is going to be on, actually um, we're going to do a teardown of a valve, then the rebuild, and then there's a calibration procedure. So um, stay tuned for those and hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. At Caddy Daddy Presents, it's all about giving back. Please enjoy the video of the Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Helena and Calistoga.